Hey guys, it's it, Brisk and Swat. I'm back with another one. Let's get to it! <laughs> it's more than a statement, it's a way of life. So ambitious. The Missy Jackson talking. <laughs> Alright, guys, this is right. I'm back with another Patreon's pick. This one's by Haven SMM, so you know it's on our girl ONJ. Um, it's some kind of interview from 1982. Let's take a look. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> yeah. You were a bit irreverent when you were watching parts of that. You were laughing. Oh, I think well, some of it is really funny. Some, some of John's expressions are really funny. I mean, but it does sort of part of it already strike you as a bit outdated, you know, a sort of bit beyond that you've moved beyond that stage. No, right? I think Greece will never really date because it was a period piece. Mm -hmm. I think it'll always be um, in fashion, so to speak. So You're right, right? Like, isn't there like a new show coming out? Like just on the pink ladies, and we've seen that John Travolta, uh, Greece, Super Bowl commercial, right? So like, yeah, Greece will never go out. Even though they tried to cancel Greece for a short period of time, right? But anyway, let's go. So it was happy laugh. Oh great! Oh no, no, happy laugh. Oh yeah, good. That's one of the fondest memories I have was making that film. And check out Owen J. Harry. It grew out right from the physical album cover, right? Because when did this come out? Like nineteen eighty one. Right, so, yeah, all right. Olivia, you're, you're OBE from the Queen, and I don't think that a, a lot of people know that you, you received that. Was it before no. or after Greece? I think it was after Greece. After Greece. Yeah. What sort of an experience was that for you? You, were the, you must be one of the youngest OBEs yes. ever, aren't you? I definitely was. Oh, wow. I didn't know she was OBE. But they were, um, <laughs> you were I felt very youngest. strange. It was an amazing experience. We, first of all, we stood off in a roped off area in the hall at Buckingham Palace, which was an experience in itself, while we were waiting for, I think they had the MBEs in one area and the OBEs in another area and the SIRS in another area and the Danes. And uh, I was quite overwhelmed by this. And just to see the castle itself and the huge paintings of all the kings and queens that had been before. And then when my name was called, and I had to actually walk on a red carpet and go up to the Queen, and it was, I didn't really believe it was happening. And they had the beef eaters standing behind her with the, holding the swords, and they had a beautiful band playing up in the balcony. And, it was amazing. Tremendous. It was. She was wearing pink cashmere and pearls, I remember. <laughs> what were you wearing? I wore, we had to wear a hat and gloves. Yes. Um, so I had a little, very prim and proper, a white suit with a red hat and red gloves and red shoes to match. Yeah. Yes. I hope you didn't clash with the Queen's pink. Oh, no, no, no. We mm -hmm. had a discussion before. Are you chatting with sort of just like we I did today? <laughs> um, what was that story about you falling about or falling down. Was it the Queen's bathroom or was it the Royal bathroom? What sort of bathroom was it? Was, it? Well, it was royal because it was in the Buckingham Palace. Um, mm. But yes, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I tripped in the loo. <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, it was quite pounced on. In fact, two days later, I went to the Royal premiere of a film in London and Princess Margaret was one of the people that we were introduced to in the line. And one of the first things she said to me was, I believe you fell down the stairs in the royal bathroom. <laughs> I said, yes, I wish I'd never mentioned it then. Yeah. I was in a royal loo a long time ago, not by invitation, I just sort of fell in by mistake and didn't fall down like <laughs> you. But, um, <laughs> in actual, I was interested to notice that the, the royal loo was actually on a sort of small platform. So was it the same in your royal loo? Mm -hmm. No, was no, it just on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was regular. No, I think it was regular. Um, you, you, you really do have very much an English background because, of mm. course, you were you were born in Britain, but you lived in Australia and Welsh father, yes. university professor, and I was about to say Oscar winner, but Nobel Prize winning physicist grandfather. Mm. Um, you, you claim really your your Australian affiliations, mm. but um, there again, your your first big break really came through. I think Cliff Richards and Matt yes. Monroe. Would you say that was yeah. correct? Cliff, um, I'd been working in Australia before I went to England, but in 19, I think it was 70, I, I did a television series with Cliff, and he really gave me an incredible exposure, and he also recorded a duet with me, and, and I used to sing with him on tour, so he was um, a very big help in the beginning of my career. And uh, Matt Monroe, you in fact came to South Africa yes, with Matt Monroe some years ago. When was that? 60... I think 66, it was in 66 and 68, I'm not sure exactly, but I was a double act with um, Pat Carroll, who is now married to John Farrow, who's my producer, Small World, but not we Pat. were um, an opening <laughs> act for him, or one of a few opening acts for him. 
just like your your brother-in-law in fact was on talking about yes. priests too who was that uh, Jeff, Jeff Conway. Conway I don't yeah. know if you get taxi no. Oh, that's crazy. I forgot her and Kaneki were like in law, sorry, <laughs> as well. <laughs> he played Kaneki in Greece One. As well. Uh, You've got friend. a big international type all over the place. Yeah. Olivia, much has been written and much has been speculated about your, your private life. Mm -hmm. How do you react to that? I mean, it's all very well having a public life. Do you resent your private life being much spoken about and all your romances or early flowering romances? Mm -hmm. How does it affect you personally? Well, you have to expect it if you're going to be in the public eye. Um, it, it can be annoying at times, especially when they speculate about people that you hardly know, <laughs> which is that it's all the time. I believe you went out with them, you've never met the person. Um, but it's just part of it, you know, you have to expect it. I try to keep it as private as I can, but it comes to a point that you, you have to live your life, and that means that you never go anywhere, so you have to just get on with it. Mm -hmm. And can I mention... Can I mention it? Can I oh, say certainly, it? certainly. I mean, your lovely man, Matt, Matt Dunsey, yeah. in fact, he's with us in the studio tonight. He's uh -huh. not as a guest on the program. And uh -oh, tell you what he is now. There he is now. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's about to be. And, uh, I mean, that's sort of obviously going very strong at the moment, and uh, it's a yes. very happy association. Oh, that's it. Mm. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> Matt, the voice looks. <laughs> yes. Uh, Matt during Xanadu? Yes, um, Matt was the stand-in for the leading man mm -hmm. when I was filming Xanadu, mm -hmm. so we became friends on the set. And it flowered from there, and as I say. from there, yeah. yes. Well, I, I saw these sort of tender looks and tender kisses in the restaurant today, and lovely it was. It's a joy to everyone. <laughs> so you're obviously not as shy as you were about these things. No. You, you have said, though, you've described yourself as uh, frightened of marriage. Is that right? Um, a, a careful, it's probably, yes, I suppose frightened, but m more careful now than frightened. Um, I've waited such a long time, I think the longer you wait, maybe the harder it is to <laughs> take the plunge. But um, it is something I would like to do. I believe in marriage is a fine institution, but when I get married, I want it to be just the one time. So mm. I want to make absolutely sure that this is the right time. Will you tell us something about your home in, in the States, on the ranch, and all those animals. You adore animals. I do, I do. You on a ranch? I have um, about three and a half acres, and on that I have five horses, um, eight dogs, who run everywhere on that property, and four cats. Are they well trained? Yeah, well, they kind of go wherever they, they want. They There's run. so many of them. <laughs> Are you a Barbara um, Woodhouse fan? I mean, do you sort of follow her training program? Whoopee! Yeah, I've tried that. <laughs> I've tried that, but um, it's very difficult with so many of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, so he's are pretty good. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I do. In fact, go riding and mm. the dogs just follow the horse so they all get out on the trails nearly every day. Where did your um, very fervent um, wildlife interest start? You're quite involved with that. Well, I've always loved animals. You know, as a child, I think my best friend was the dog next door rather than the children next door. I always used to play with animals and I've always had a great rapport with them, I think. Um, and then as I got older, I used to a few years ago wear fur coats until I realised, you know, I didn't, wasn't really aware of the danger to a lot of the species and uh, I think the last probably six years ago or so I cancelled a tour to, to Japan. I remember the, the yeah, slaughter of the dolphins. Slaughter of the dolphins and that kind of increased my awareness and I stopped wearing fur coats and I um, try to en encourage my friends not to wear fur coats and um, just educate people generally. I think we have to start with the children because they're going to be the ones that are going to have to do something about it. Mm. I think we're too late with a lot of uh, us and the older generation. Olivia, plans for 83? Well, nothing really for certain except I hope to do another film with John Travolta. We've been trying to put one together since Greece One and finally he has found a script and it's a comedy. Um, it down, music, yeah. Not a musical comedy, <laughs> but there will be music. So we're hoping to do that early next year. And a few other films that are tentative, and I'd like to talk about them in case they don't happen. Okay. Well, I wait with um, <laughs> bated breath John Travolta's next famous quote about the <laughs> Olivia oh. of the future. And, um, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for the live concert coming up. Honestly, I feel like um, there wouldn't have been... Like, Greece was their film together. Like, I don't think any other film under any other circumstances that they did would have been, like, on par with Greece, if that makes sense. At the end of this week, all the very best. Thank you. You sure South Africa is going to love you. All right.
Grace. This was a cool interview, right? Because she had a girl and Jay chilling, talking about her love for animals, right? How she was already environmentally conscious. Uh, maybe before that was a thing. Um, a little shy in some in some parts, but a little shy in some parts. But similar to Dolly, um, in my opinion, when Olivia does interviews, like you get like this joyous cuteness about her. But then there's always, in my opinion, this underlying sadness that was also there as well, right? I'm not sure if you guys see it, but I've seen it in, in I think most interviews um, she's had. But uh, yeah, anyway, drop the comments down below if you remember this interview from 1982. What do you think? First time seeing it like me, what do you think? Also, if you are not ready, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you are subscribed, make sure you join the channel. If you like me to react to us, your choice, you know what to do. Hit me with Patreon. The link is below. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.